Oh yeah, got a little uh, bit of tree in my face there. Hope that's not a problem. Soph's just put out a surprise reel and a YouTube short and a TikTok. It's universal content in the vertical platform world. Um, but she wants people to duet with her and write their own solo for Dare To. And I think that means everyone can join in, including me. something's not quite right when I'm just sat here noodling. And unfortunately on this channel, we're at the point where 99% of the stuff that I say now sounds like I'm setting up a joke. But on this rare occasion, I'm not. I've had a shit week. I had to go and put my mum's dog down. And uh, it was a little dude. His name was Alfie, 15 years old. And he meant an awful lot to me and everybody. Um, but I think if he was still there now, he'd want me to teach some blues licks in B. Today I wanted to just give you a little weekend lesson, because it's manageable for me, before I start bawling my eyes out. Um, I'm feeling a bit sad, so blues is fitting. But basically, I was toying around with the blues scale, as you do, and I thought you might find it useful um, for me to show you a shape that you may or may not know, and a lick that I came up with within. So <clears throat> a lot of the time, we're in B, by the way, B blues, but a lot of the time, let's say we're playing in B blues, we might just go to this position. And that's a very cool shape. You can write an abundance of iconic blues guitar solos just using that scale shape. You can have a lot of fun in that position, as you've just seen, but you may find yourself doing the same thing over and over again. So let me show you a second position of the B blue scale, same notes, same order, different area of the fretboard. So closer inspection. We're actually going to start this scale shape with the third finger on the B note, seventh fret of the E, and then you're going to walk up to the D, minor third, perfect fourth, seventh fret of the A string, and then that flat five with the pinky on the eighth fret. So what's cool about this shape is that you get the flat five and the five over two different strings, right? That in itself already is something different um, rather than just playing the flat five and the perfect fifth semitone apart on the same string you're getting a tonal difference um, as well 
By tone, I mean like, um, should I say timbre? What's the word? You know what I mean. One sounds thinner than the other, right? Okay, after that, you're going to hit the seventh fret of the D, the pinky. And then the octave is going to be fourth fret of the G, index. Okay. Then we've got pinky, seventh fret of the G. And this is where you might be more familiar um, with this little box shape run at the end. Five, six, seven on the B string. You got your perfect fourth, flat five, and the fifth chromatically in order this time, just like here. It sounds like a terrible version of Paradise City. Uh, to finish, fifth fret of the E, seventh fret, obviously, the root note. Now I often find myself playing in the top half of this scale shape. And it's nice to be able to slide out of your first position back and not just feel like you're hemmed into that box shape. So here is um, the cool little lick that I'm gonna show you. It's weird, it's chaotic, annoying and angular. I must have written it, right? So why I like this is because it wouldn't be impossible, but it would be uncomfortable if you were to play this kind of thing in the first position. So again, same notes, but we're able to do different things. So what I do, hammer on from the sixth fret of the B to the seven, and then up to the fifth fret of the high E. And then you're gonna chromatically pull off seven, six, five, back on the B. Come down to the seventh fret of the G. And then this time you're gonna hammer on five to six on the B. And then up to the seventh fret of the high E, the root note. Cool lick just by itself, but then we've got this after it. So starting by pulling off from sixth fret of the B, flat five. Come down to third finger, seventh fret of the G. Back up and walk down the scale, new scale shape. Finish, we've got this. So that's going to be hammering on from the root note to the minor third, up to the perfect fourth, down to the seventh fret of the D. That's your minor seventh, but the lower octave, and then back up to the root note. I wouldn't kind of naturally play this in the first position. Um, so it's a really good lesson in practicing scales across the fretboard because you might not have found your favorite pocket. And um, the more that I kind of push myself to explore and take myself out of my comfort zone, the more interesting the stuff that I write gets. So again, one more time, here's that lick. Oof, very flavorful. Uh, another cool little thing that you can do is just rotate those first two parts of the lick. Well, that was quick and easy, wasn't it? Relatively straightforward. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do like this kind of thing, please let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit subscribe. 
sum it up, bell next to it. And um, yeah, sorry for the, uh, what's the word? Somber mood? Hey Google, what does somber mean? They say, when you're somber or somber, you're acting glum, depressed or sad. Do you want a little more context? Not really, no, that'll do. Okay. Could have told me a fucking joke. Something to cheer me up. Pathetic. I don't know what I'm paying for. But yeah, thanks for bearing with me. My somber mood. It will improve. Bless his little head. Have fun and stay out of danger, okay? I'll see you soon.